we're looking at designing these amazing photo mats today. These are multi-layer, so much detail, and they are super simple to design, cut, and put together. Hi, I'm Brenda Lambert. I'm a TJC licensed instructor for Silhouette. You found your way to Silhouette Success, and I do hope that you're going to join our little community. You're going to want to have your picture frame handy before you start this project, or at least know what size picture frame you're going to be working with. You're going to want some coordinating cardstock, at least three colors, and you need your printed photo or some photo paper to print it on at home. When you are creating a design in Silhouette Studio, it almost always starts off with a very simple shape. Let's grab a rectangle and work with that. We're going to draw that out on our mat, come up to our measurements. I want my width set at eight and my height set at 10. And I have my aspect ratio button unlocked for this because I wanted to adjust the width and height independently. This is going to be the base for our entire project. So let's move this off to the side and duplicate it. We always want an extra copy to work with. The first step in creating these mats is the top layer. It is super simple. We just need to go to our offset panel and click on internal offset. I like to have this set at 0 0.250. That's gonna leave a quarter inch all the way around. We can click on apply, select both of these pieces, right click and make a compound path. And we have the outline of the top piece of our mat. We are going to add to this in just a little bit, but for right now we are going to change up the color and set it aside. Let's duplicate our original rectangle and slide that on so that we can work on the other mats and get that layered effect around the picture. We need to create a cutout for the picture on this one. So let's grab another rectangle and draw that out. And the width of this rectangle is important. We have a quarter inch frame here and we want this rectangle to fit in here with a quarter inch distance. The interior measurement on this is seven and a half inches. So if we want this rectangle to have a quarter inch all the way around it, we need to set this rectangle to seven. And you can see that we will have that distance on each side that we need. You do want to have your smart snapping feature on for this project. You can see when the smaller rectangle is lined up with the center of the larger rectangle, that blue line lights up and we need that to make sure that everything is set properly in place. We want this rectangle to be centered with the original one, but we're going to set it right at the top. And again, a blue line will light up. It'll kind of snap in place and you can make the cutout as tall as you want it, as long as you have your width set properly. We want to make sure that we have that same width of a border at the top. So once it's selected, we can come up to our move by and we're going to move this rectangle down by a distance of 0.5. We're going to move it down a half an inch. Now that is set perfectly in place and we could combine these two rectangles for the cutout, but we want to take this a step further because we need to make sure that all of the mats are perfectly placed. So let's do an internal offset on the cutout rectangle. Again, we're sticking with 0.25, and now we're going to click on internal offset one more time, and it's going to do an internal offset of the internal offset. So now we have three consecutive rectangles here, but we need two more mats to place them on. Let's duplicate the original twice and set them in place right on top of the one we started with. Just make sure they all line up with those blue lines lit up. Now we need to see our cutout rectangle. So let's right click and send this one to the back, right click and send this one to the back. And now we can see our rectangles. Now we're going to take each base rectangle and combine it with a cutout rectangle to make our mats. Let's select one of the bases Hold down your shift key and click on one of the cutouts, right click and make a compound path. When we move this away, 
can see that the two have combined for one of our mats. We can go through the same process two more times. Select a mat, hold down your shift key and select a rectangle, right click and make a compound path. And we can do the same for the last one. Now we have the cutout for all three of our mats. Let's work on getting these layered. This is a lot easier if you adjust each one to a different color. That way you can see how they are going to be layered. The one with the smallest rectangle has to go to the back. Right click and send that to the back. This one should come in next. Let's bring this layer to the front. Slide that in place. And this one goes on top. Let's bring that to the front now. And you can see it all starting to come together. And you can send this one to the back and have that as a base layer. That would be something just to tape your photo onto. Now we have all of our layers organized. Let's go ahead and decorate this a bit. I chose to do mine in a baby theme, but these are really great for any occasion. You can do family vacations. You can do yearly photos for your kids' elementary pictures. You can make one of these as a wedding gift, baby shower gift, you name it. The possibilities are endless. Now I have typed out a name here and I'm going to click off so that I can click back on and I can go to the textile panel and we can choose a different font for this. I went with tail. I just downloaded this from Creative Fabrica and it's just simple but very cute and it does have some glyphs so we can add the tail to the G and to the N. Let's scroll down and find the glyphs that we need. I can double click to bring my cursor back up. I'm going to backspace to get rid of that G and add in this one. I can set my cursor at the end, backspace on the N and add in this one. Now I have a tail on each end. It looks a lot fancier. And I want this to go from one side of the frame to the other. So let's pull that out a little bit. And I also decided that I wanted it to be a little bit off center. I'm setting the Y down right on the bottom to give it a little bit more stability. This side is overlapping and this side is overlapping, but also goes off here. And we can fix that in just a minute. But for right now, what we want to do is while the name is still selected, hold down our shift key and select our top frame piece. We can right click and weld that together. Now all of these pieces are combined. Let's get rid of this tail here. The easiest way I've found to do this is first of all zoom in right on that piece let's grab the eraser and just click kind of close to the frame it doesn't have to be perfect we can delete the large part of the tail double click on the frame to bring up all of these editing points we don't need any of these so let's select the first one and just click on the backspace button until they're all gone and now this side of the frame is perfectly straight again. We can click off to get rid of the editing points and that looks really good. At this point in the process, I decided I wanted to add a couple of baby feet. So let's click on file, go down to merge and find that file real quick. It's right here and I'm going to bring in the SVG file and it is pretty tiny here. Let's bring this down here. We're going to have to do a little bit of work with it, but we're going to get it scaled to size first or roundabout. Just make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to work with. That's going to be just about right. I think it's a little bit big, but that's okay. Let's bring this off to the side so it doesn't interfere with the other work that we have going on. And we need to right click and ungroup. Now I can take just this one and move it over here. And I chose this one because it's closest to the thickness of the lettering. Both of these were a little bit on the thin side. We can right click and delete. We don't need all three of them. I am going to shrink this down just a little bit, I think. 
and I had this one connected to the side. Let's right click and duplicate, right click and flip horizontally. And I just slid this one down a little bit so that it connected to the O and I thought that looked super cute. Now we can click on each of the feet and the outside photo frame, right click and weld that together. And now this is all one solid piece. And this is going to be our top layer. Now to give it a little bit of depth and dimension, I also put love at first sight here, but I used the stencil font and actually cut it out of this mat so that the color of this mat would show through. Let's give it a try here. I just typed it out in lowercase letters because when I use the stencil font, it changes it to all capitals. We can scale that down. The text is still selected, so we are going to hold down the shift key and select the mat as well. Right click, and this time we're going to make a compound path with it. And that cuts this right out of this mat and lets the color of this mat shine through. Now we can slide. It also brought this to the front. So let's right click on the top layer and bring that back to the front. Let's select all of them and use the center button. Everything is put right back into place. And now this is all ready to cut out. Again, you can also cut out the base layer if you'd like. You're looking at five different cuts, but in all honesty, this project only takes about five or six minutes to cut. Your first two layers are going to take the most time because they have the details. The other layers are super simple and they go really quickly. Don't forget to give this video a quick like if you've learned something new. Remember, you can always share your work over in the Facebook group. Now go create something amazing and I'll see you in the next video.